Hi, and welcome to our What's Old video for the week of March 3rd through 9th. I'm Wendy, and this is Kevin, and normally you see just Wendy on a What's Old video, but I was able to talk Kevin into joining us today. So if you enjoy this format and want to see more Kevin, please let us know in the comments below. <laughs> so for those of you who are new, normally Wendy explains all of our numbers and how we get our profits and everything. So she's just going to show it. Oh, money. Cha-ching! So she's just going to show a tile this time that you can pause and read the details if you want. And if you don't, then you're not bogged down. So we can move on. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's move on. Okay. So the first thing that we sold this week was a... It's like a newscaster. I know, right? It's just in. All right. The first thing that sold was a Hot Wheels Monster Jam Grave Digger Bad to the Bone truck. And we got this at a, out of a thrift store toy bag for 43 cents. And that's it. Yeah. What well, do you have to say about that? Uh, I picked this up in a thrift store toy bag for 43 cents. <laughs> well, we paid more for the toy bag. We paid a lump sum for the yeah, toy we, bag we and buy then we a, broke down our purchase. We buy a toy bags and then we cents. list everything out of it and then split it up. Yeah. Okay, next up was three packs of Gemico playing cards that were used in play at the Golden Nugget Casino. These were vintage playing cards that we found in another business that we own. So we had no cost and they sold for $12 even. Mm. We've had those listed for a long time. Yeah, those have been up there yeah. for a bit. They have a lot of interest, but nobody wanted to pay anything and for it's, them. And it's just playing cards. There's yeah. nothing special about I mean, it. you know, they were used in the casino, but, you know, big whoop. I mean, that's millions of decks a year. So. Yeah. Eh. All right, next up was an Eastman Kodak FlashGuard Codalite flash holder for a Duraflex 3 camera. And I guess we're, <gasps> that's probably them paying for the, the Barbie. Let's see. Thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I know how this works. It's like I all new to me every the time. The tiles are going to be right here. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so we got this at a out of a garage sale, out of a big box of camera equipment. I got yeah. the whole box for like $10. It was an enormous box. You remember how big that box was? a lot of stuff in that box. Yeah. A lot of stuff. And I only paid 22 cents for I per item out of that box. And this item sold that, for $15. Yeah. That was a that, good deal. That box has made its money back many, oh, long many time times. Ago. Many a times. long time ago. Uh, okay. Next up was a four cassette set. So like a box set of the great operas by Luciano Pavarotti. Luciano Pavarotti. And it was kind of a shed flips, yeah. shed flips nod. It's a bit of an Italiano. Yeah, all Italiano. <laughs> yeah, I remember we, when we got this at the estate sale, and they tried to upcharge us on it because it was they like a, a four tape set. Oh, that was that estate yeah. sale. Yeah, it was like a four tape set, but it's sealed in one four tape set and they, they tried to like charge us four times price. the cassette yeah. price because it was a four tape yeah set. they had like, a what? sign up that said cassettes are like i guess a it was, dollar each i guess it was two dollars because you got had two dollars listed yeah but then when we got up to the register they were like well the eat e it's each cassette in the set is a dollar and we were like we balked at that and they they didn't yeah and i think i think they like we came to an agreement of this is kind of ridiculous eight dollars <laughs> for a Pavarotti cassette yeah we were like what <laughs> no, thank you like crazy they knew nobody else was gonna buy it yeah okay next up was a... oh did you even say what the profit was oh i did i not for? oh i guess I not i don't think so i think well, you I derailed interrupted her. me see this is why i normally don't do these with her i derail her train of thought <laughs> Okay, so this one sold for $19.99 and we paid $2 for it at the estate sale, the questionable estate sale. Mm. Okay, that was the estate sale that we got, we got uh, almost thrown out of. We actually did get thrown out of it because they were like, um, excuse me, sir and madam, this estate sale has closed 30 minutes ago and you're still here. No, that was a different one. That was a different one, different part, different, different towns. No, no, it was different towns. Yeah, Trust me on this one. It's different towns. Okay. All right. Next up was an eight and a half inch desktop paper trimmer for scrapbooking. It was new in the package. I bought this for myself. I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally going to use that. 
And then I brought it home and I was like, why did I buy this? I'm never going to use this. And so I decided to sell it. I paid $3.25 for it at a state sale. This is like literally a dollar store I, I item. I didn't even know you got that for yourself. I thought that you... Yeah, I don't know what um, I was thinking. It's It comes from a dollar store and I paid $3.25 for it. it that's was, business. <laughs> Anyway, it is business because we sold it for fifteen dollars yeah, and four now cents. Now who's the chump? <laughs> no, you're not a chump if you bought it. I'm sorry. I yeah, no, nobody's a chump. <laughs> I'm glad you me. got something you wanted, and I'm glad that we got rid of it. That's Kevin's how I like feel. like fitness, fitness mouth over there. <laughs> this All is right. why I don't do it. <laughs> okay, next up, we got our payback for. Ripping somebody off on the paper trimmer and <laughs> we didn't rip anybody <laughs> off. They paid a fair price. We they lost wanted some it. money on some Tevas. So we had purchased some Teva sandals mm. at a garage sale for two dollars and seventy-five cents. And unfortunately, the first time we sold them, which was a long time ago, they were returned to us due to a fit sure. issue. And so we did have some of the shipping costs associated with that, at least going out to them. I don't remember if we did re free returns at the time that we sold those the first time or not. Uh, I'm pretty sure we did, but uh, Sorry, uh, it's my, been a long I'm, time. I'm a very important person. What? Anyway, uh, so we did have costs associated with that, but we relisted them and eventually, after a really long time, sold them again. They were a very small size. Yeah. But we technically lost a dollar and eighty cents on those. I mean, we recouped some of our in the in the grand scheme. Yeah, in the grand because scheme, of the we return. recouped like all of our fees and stuff associated with the first sale. We recouped pretty much everything that we had spent on it, except for that dollar and eighty cents. But you know, we spent yeah, all that time on it, so it turned. It was not a good buy because it did not turn out well for us. But you know, what if are you it had stayed do? going the first time, though, it would have been fine. Yeah, it, it would have made fine. a few bucks. Would have been, been fine. fine. But that's what we get for charging somebody $15 on that dollar paper trimmer. The world has a way of coming back on you. All right. Next up was a Seventh-day Adventist Bible Students Source Book, Volume 9, from 1960. Kevin got this at the thrift store for $1.35, and it sold for $22.38. I always pick up books at the thrift store when they look unique. I don't even know. I just, I don't even know how to describe it now. It's more of a Zen thing. Like, oh yeah, somebody will want this. Mm. You're and, one and there the was, book? And I'm one with the book. And there was, there was two of them. This is the second. When we sold the first one, it wasn't a student source book, but it was another Seventh-day Adventist yeah. book. It looked almost exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, they were from the same We sold that something. one pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. And this one hang around, hung around for a while, but we got rid of it. Next up was a Disney Camp Rock beach towel featuring Joe Jonas and Demi Lovato. And we got that at a garage sale for a dollar. I was like, this thing is really hard to find. It's gonna sell for a lot. <laughs> and then, uh, no, it sold for $11.70. And we only made like $3 on it, so. I am amazed we made $3 <laughs> on it. And we were gonna put this one in our garage sale coming yeah, up, so yeah. I'm glad to get rid of it. But it had Joe Jonas on it mean anything to me well i don't it's know nothing to me. i don't know what to tell you all right next up oh we got rid of a huge lot of 18 mm. western movies on vhs y'all know we're doing a big clean out of those and these were primarily given to us by friends and family so we didn't have much cost on them but we did have cost on some of them our all-in cost on those was six dollars and 25 cents and these sold for 24 dollars and 99 cents so not tons of profit on that but that cleared up a lot of space a few bucks of profit but a ton of space yeah ton of space. I'm sure somebody was very happy with that lot. It was a good lot. Uh, they were because they also bought another lot soon after it was the same buyer. Yeah. Bought another. Repeat buyer, baby. Yeah. Next up was a women's orange and black halter swim dress that we got from the Via Trading box that we got when we partnered with them. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. So that one sold for $23.80. And I will tell you that the swim dresses mm -hmm. were by far the most popular swimsuits that we had. Those sold the yeah. first. First, Those were the first to go. So if you ever see swim dresses, might be worth picking up for the right price. Seems like maybe the eBay buyer prefers, eBay buyer the prefers more a swim dress. Swimsuit. Yes. Yeah. 
maybe more modest swimsuits are harder to come by in a store. I don't know. It's possible. But it's possible. yeah, definitely those sold first. And we got more for those than we did for yeah. other swimsuits too. Okay, next up was a pair of women's L.L. Bean walking shorts, like khaki walking shorts. These were gifted to us to sell by a family member, so we had no cost. Do and they not sold. run in them. Yeah, only walk. Walking only. Walking only, walking shorts only. The warranty only. does not cover running. That's right, that's true. Uh, those sold for $15.98. Not a brand I would seek out. But it was given, so. But for free, I'll take it. Free's good. Okay, next up was, I mean, we made profit on it, but we would not do it again because it was such pain. Oh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Although anybody, I, did, I did have fun like playing with it, if I'm honest. If anybody watched the ship chat, yeah, they, they, you would have seen that it was going to cost like... It was a weird deal, though. A hundred dollars to ship it to California or it something. It was a weird Some, deal. It I was mean, ridiculous. Kevin though. has like a lot of knowledge about like shipping prices and stuff, and there was something weird and off. Let us just tell you what it was I, first, and then we'll then we'll okay, get into okay. it. Okay. So it was a nine-piece lot of vintage 1987 Fisher Price Little People. It was the big garage, and it had most of the figures and cars with it from, it was the set number 2504. So it had, it wasn't complete by any means, but it had most of the pieces with it. And it was in decent condition. We had gotten it at a garage sale for $15. It sold, the buyer was all in for $70 on that. And it was going to San Francisco. It was Francisco? going to San Francisco. San Francisco. If you're going yeah. to San Francisco. It, you're gonna cost well. a lot to ship if you live where we live. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I ship things to California all the time, and it should have been about $25 tops, $20. and Even for the big box. Even for the big box. But something about that address in San Francisco, it did not like it. It must have been it, on it, one of those hills. It, yeah, it must have been on the very top of the, the steepest hill there because it was really expensive. It was going it to was be insane. like $80 to yeah. ship it. It was it was it was crazy. And so, so we had it all like padded up. It was inside all pre boxed. Box. I had it pre boxed. Yeah. But I took that box apart. We did. And, and I we cut put it, it in way, a box without any down. padding. We decided yeah. it was worth the risk. I did. I, I made sure it had enough cardboard around it, but I cut it down to the size of the garage and got it as small as possible. And I think it still ended up costing thirty something dollars. It was it was crazy. Yeah. No package that size, even to like Oregon wouldn't be that big. Yeah. I, I don't know why it costs so much. Yeah. But you got to be wary when you do free shipping. You got to be wary of random outliers like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, it is like a literal first time that we've ever had anything that off the scale. That off the scale. If yeah. it wasn't going to like Puerto Rico or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, I'm, and you but we still managed to, I managed by reboxing and I still managed to eke out some profit. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, just a couple of quick notes. You can in your um, in your shipping policies select to not send to places like Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. So that's an option. You can also select not to send to Hawaii and uh, Alaska on certain items if you want to. Just as an FYI. So if you do want to offer free shipping, and you want to turn off the. If option, you just want it for the the what do they call it the lower forty eight. Yeah. So you can you can do that. The contiguous. So honesty. you know if you're worried about that as something that might create a headache for you depending on where you live, I usually don't do that because the chances of it selling to a place like that, I just feel like the benefit outweighs the risk. Yeah. I don't know in my opinion. So far, we've made money on everything on, on that we sent to those places. I just, anyway, I just pad it enough to where it covers it. But this. This was going to California. I mean, we it, would it not have, been fine. yeah, it should have been fine. So this was a weird one, it's but a fluke. just a couple quick notes, just in case you do want to offer free shipping and you're like, oh my gosh, what if it's going to go to Hawaii? Yeah. You can actually go in and click the, the, to and, select, say, I don't want to send And we would have never, had we had calculated shipping on this item, we literally would have never sold it because. Well, not to that location. The calculated shipping yeah. for that place would have been yeah. probably $125 yeah. or something just ridiculous. Yeah. It's crazy. So, you know, you live, you learn, but. And I feel like for some reason, either UPS or FedEx wouldn't go there, or it was just as much to go there. There's something about that particular spot. Yeah. Oh, and it got there just fine, even though yeah, we didn't we got have good any padding. We got good feedback. So, no worries. so no worries. you know, it all worked out. 
Okay, next up was a Genuine Coach Pewter Metallic Leather Hobo Purse. And it, it says read, so I guess it had maybe a little wear on it somewhere. I don't remember exactly what was wrong with it. We got that at a church rummage sale for $3.25, and that sold for $39 even. Okay, next up was a Chi flat iron, and we got that out of a storage unit for $1.16. And it sold for $39.99. And I did a video recently where I talked about why you shouldn't panic or be worried or you know freak out or anything if you if a buyer opens a return on an item, or even if a buyer sends you a message about wanting to open a return on an item. And this is a, a perfect example of why. And, you know, things might turn out differently in the end, but I did get a message from the buyer who purchased this and it was a really rude message, if I'm being honest. It, And also I felt like it was kind of a slam against resellers. Okay, the message said, hi, my husband purchased this for me because my old one broke. This is not in excellent condition. It does not slide through my hair. There was something on it and I have tried cleaning it and it's still not good. Very disappointing. There was also some red wax material in the outside holes. Did you buy this used and resell? I can't even use it. Thanks for any help. Maybe it wasn't that rude. I don't know, I just found the reselling comment to be like, like why does it matter? Oh, uh, it, it might not, it wasn't necessarily rude, but it wasn't nice. Yeah. It was a little accusatory. Yeah, accusatory, I and, guess. And, we had complete pictures and descriptions yeah. and uh, and no, I did not see anything red pressed inside the hole. I didn't see anything in it and, either. And I did. I taught. I, we heated it up, made sure it heated up, and I cleaned all over the plate, even though there really wasn't anything on it. And of course, I felt the plate. I didn't like run it through my hair or anything, but I felt the plate. It, I didn't feel anything on there. It felt completely smooth to me. So, I mean, obviously there could be something wrong with the item, but I didn't know this that there was. So of course I just responded with our standard response saying, I'm so sorry there was an issue with your item. We are glad to let you know that we offer free returns. All you have to do is open a return request through eBay. And if, once we return the once we receive the item back in the same condition that it was sent out in, we're happy to provide you with a full refund. And they shortly thereafter they opened, opened a return, a return request. request, but they have not sent they, the item back at all. They still haven't sent it yet. So I don't know what's going to happen. It's been a long time too. It's been a couple weeks. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But all that to say is that people can maybe make a big stink about something and it might be for nothing. You might end up not Although ever hearing might, from them again. We might get it back. We might get it back. We might get negative feedback. Who knows? But what honestly, like even if we this. get it back and we sell it again, uh, we'll probably still be in the profit on it because we got it so cheap. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I probably will get it back and clean it again and test it on my own hair to see if yeah. I think it I'll, I'll test is it. bad. I mean, I'll just make sure it works. Yeah, we'll test it on. We'll test it on Kevin's hair. All right, let's move on. Okay, the next item was a huge, giant lot of 112 all-new sealed McDonald's Happy Meal toys. It was over 11 pounds of Happy Meal toys. It was a lot, it was a lot, a lot of Happy, Happy Meal, Meal toys. toys. They were ones that we had collected from our own Happy Meals. We had gotten one, a lot of them had come from like a huge box that we had purchased at a garage sale. Mm -hmm. We had picked them up in the Goodwill bins. Some of them had been gifted to us. They came from everywhere. They came from everywhere. We did have some cost, mostly from the ones that we picked up in the bins and the ones that we got at the garage sale. Um, the cost that we had paid for those was $44.74. That's probably somewhat of an inflated cost. It is definitely an inflated cost because like when we go to the bins and we get them, when we used to pick them up in the bins, which we don't really anymore, but we used to... Uh, we split the cost of everything we bought that day by item instead of by weight. And weight-wise, there's we definitely yeah. didn't have that much into them. But I, you know, like I said in a previous video, I always keep what I had put on the spreadsheet originally because yeah, yeah. if I start going back in time and tweaking it later, that's like messing with the numbers yeah. and not right. It's spreadsheet math. Yeah, it's spreadsheet it's math. It's not real math. Yeah, I mean, all of our real math is in our 
accounting software where we keep all of our all of our true numbers. Our spreadsheet is where we keep all of our stuff for quick glance and yeah. you know this kind of this kind of information. Okay, so this we just wanted to get rid of these. These are items that we were clearing out. We sold them on auction and they sold for $61.22. So if you're using that inflated cost of goods number that we stated, which we did because that's what's on our spreadsheet, we technically lost $5.18 on this. I would but have paid $5 though because <coughs> we opened up, we have the, our big bins we store things in and we opened up at least one, maybe two bins. But, space. But to us, like, I mean, we have had this, you know, money. I mean, yeah, tied we, got, up. we got most yeah. of that money. Yeah, back. that was like money to us because, you know, these and have been we, sitting in our store for a long time. And we have so much extra space now for actual things that we want to sell. So yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it works it's out. Not, yeah, it's, it's not, not a big, big deal. deal. Jinx. Okay, next up was a good sale. This was a Bundle of three Call of Duty Black Ops 1, 2, and 3 Microsoft Xbox 360 games. They were all tested and worked. We got these at a garage sale for $3 in total, and they sold for $39. And we had an interesting story of how we got found these. So we had one and three, and then we had the case for two that we had gotten at the same garage sale. And we also purchased an Xbox 360 at that garage sale, but we didn't have a power cord, so we couldn't get in it. So we eventually bought a power cord and were able to open it up. And lo and behold, number two was yep. in there. We made <laughs> no, a number two. There was a number two in that machine. <laughs> and it was a, that way we had all three and it really jacked. Because we had one and three listed for a yeah. certain price, but we really were able to jack the price up yeah. with that, that full set. Yeah. And it sold really quickly. Yeah. It was awesome. It was so. a good sale. But uh, all of those games have value on their own. So yeah, if you ever Call find any of the Call of Duty Xbox 360 uh, games. Yeah, on 360 for sure. Worth picking up for the right price. Yeah. And that brings us to our next item, which was the Microsoft Xbox 360 there console. Uh, it was a limited, it was the slim limited edition Halo 4 bundle. Yeah. We had the console, the cord, and then we had two other games. That the went cord we bought on eBay yeah. so that we could open it up to see if there was anything in it and to test the unit. Right. So, but it was well worth it. So, so we had paid $15 for the console at a garage sale. Yeah. And like how and then much? It was for the... $41.79 total for yeah. the cord and the $15 for the garage sale. So right. Right. about $25-ish dollars for well, the cord. Well, and also we had two games that we had some cost on. So oh, and there was a yeah. couple. Yeah. So when we realized it was a Halo 4 edition, I was like, oh, let me go check. And we actually had Halo 3, Xbox 360, and Halo mm -hmm. 4, Xbox 360. So we bundled. Already in there, so we just threw it in as a bundle. But that is a very valuable, that that 360S limited edition Halo, Halo edition, 4 yeah. bundle, or the Halo 4 console, is a valuable console. And that whole bundle sold very fast, like less really than 24 quickly. hours for our asking price? I, I think it I did. think it was our full asking price of $219. Yeah, it was. So that was a really good sale. Really good sale. So yeah, we cleared 150 bucks on that one. That was good. Yeah. And next up is an item that I now know is a bolo. So be on the lookout for this item. Oh, yeah. Bolo alert. What? Uh, this was gifted to us to sell. And when I was researching it, I was like, man, these have like over 100% sell through rate. Like I could, I was kind of, honestly, I was kind of dubious about it. This is it. something I wouldn't normally have even picked up at a garage no, sale. No, me either. I would have avoided it like I would have I would have probably not even looked it up. But I was, I was like, really? Or do these really sell this well? But Apparently, they did. They This one sold in less than 24 it hours. So it sold fast. so fast. So fast. Okay, so this was a vintage pair of two. The brand was Chris Lloyd and they were red and black plastic domino abacus style scorekeepers and these were given to us we didn't have any cost and they flew off our shelf for twenty six dollars and thirty eight cents and i guess everybody else's are flying off their shelves too so I guess be on the so. lookout for those i mean who knew all right next up was another item that flew off our shelf yeah this was it, norm it normally does well though it does this was a lot of two genuine HP ink cartridges. 
They were number 53A. And they were new in the package, but they didn't have the box. Yeah. They actually said not for resale on the package, so. We broke the internet law. Oops. <laughs> and uh, those were given to us to sell, and we sold those for $24.99. Nice. Next up was a Mary Kay Mineral Eye Color Eyeshadow in the color Ballerina Pink. And that was also gifted to us to sell by a family member, and that one sold immediately. That sold for, let's see, $16.99. All right, next up were two 1990 Topps 1989 All-Star Baseball Cal Ripken cards that were Kevin's. Those sold for a total of $4.34. And next up was a 1992 Fleer Ultra Baseball card by, uh, of the player Cal Ripken Jr. And that sold for $2.29. My Cal Ripken collection is slowly disappearing. Wow. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Next up was a Disney Frozen Elsa and Anna reusable tote bag. It was new with the tags. We found this in the bins for 92 cents and it sold for $7.53. That was another one that was headed to the garage sale, so. Or just into our, into our car. Oh, groceries. we have so many totes. Yeah. We don't need any reusable bags. We have, have them come in our ears. Let it go. Yeah, and I don't want a frozen one anyway. <laughs> I guess we could put frozen goods in it. Next up was a Mega Charizard Pokemon battle action figure, but he was in an incident and he was missing a leg. So it was very sad, yeah. But he did manage to sell for $11.98. So he did still have some value and that made him feel better about himself. Uh, next up was a lot of 17 comedy VHS movies. Four of them were, were brand new and sealed and the rest of them were used. Are these the ones that went to that Yeah, the same guy who bought the Westerns earlier bought these a couple days later. Most of the these were gifted to us to sell. We only had a dollar and two cents in these, so we made more on this lot. So that's good. Yeah. Next up was an 18-inch an doll dress set. It had some sandals with it and a headband, and it was a cute little like spring linen dress. This was by our generation, but it would fit like American Girl dolls. And we got that at a garage sale for a dollar, and it sold for $18.38. And next up, I'm going to announce the winner of the Nina's Jewels t-shirt. Do you want to announce who won? And the winner of the t-shirt is Florence Foden, 4234. Congratulations. You're the winner. All you have to do is reach out to us at the email address that's in our description box below. Let us know what size you want and let us know what shipping address we should send to. And we are gonna temporarily suspend our Nita's Jewels t-shirt giveaway, but we may restart that at some point, so be on the lookout for that. But at this time, I'd like to pause for a moment and invite you to subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed. If you've made it this far in the video, it probably means you're enjoying it. So do consider hitting that subscribe button because it really does help out our channel. And next we are gonna open some viewer mail and let's get this open and see what we got. We've received mail from this person before. I know, I think I know who it's from, but I'm not gonna assume. All right, well, we got a post, a nice little postcard and a card that, it's an Easter card. It says, there are certain times of the year when the goodness of God is remembered in a special way and Easter is one of those seasons. Thinking of you and the way God's goodness, God's goodness shines through, wishing you rich blessings at Easter. And it's from Richard. Thank you so much, Richard. We appreciate it. We appreciate you always remembering us at the holiday. That's so nice. We appreciate it. And we appreciate your support of our channel. Thank you so much. All right, well, let's move on to the next item. The next thing we sold what came from a recent storage unit and mm. it was a 2002 lot of four Coca-Cola bottle company 100th anniversary bottles. So we had paid a dollar and 16 cents for those out of that I can't, storage unit. I can't believe those Honestly, sold. I can't believe they sold. I really can't believe so. And I was so happy we got good feedback on them. I was so happy they made it without exploding. Yep. 
I always worry about bottles filled with soda and things. It's yeah. like mm. it was old soda though. It was I old didn't have soda. any more carbonation. But you know the lids on the bottles were slightly rusty. Yeah, and that's true. They, they were in sad, saddish were. shape, but yeah. Yeah, somebody was perfect. happy with them. Yeah. We made some money and all is well at the yeah. world. They sold for nineteen dollars and ninety eight cents. All right, next up. Oh, this one breaks my heart. Yeah, this, this one, one was truly a, breaks my heart. This one was a bad. So I was ready to. We had like a bunch of jewelry <clears throat> that. It was nice jewelry. It was nice jewelry. Some of it was sterling, but I just wanted to be done with it. Like, I, there's certain kinds of jewelry that I like selling, like different brooches and things like that. Some different kinds of like vintage earrings and stuff. But, you know, some of it, like, I just don't want to mess with. And I was ready to just clear a lot of that out of our store when we did our annual inventory this year and I wanted to do a big lot and we had been really successful with a couple of other big yeah. lots of jewelry recently and so I was like you know what I'm gonna do it pretty much the same way but I <clears throat> always want to be completely transparent in all of my videos for that matter but in all of my listings too so on the two, I think this is the difference between this third listing and the first two listings. The first two listings of bulk jewelry, I had listed it as unsearched. And that's because it was, it was truly unsearched. We literally took totes of jewelry that we had found in a storage unit and dumped them in a box and sold them without looking through them. But I knew what was in this lot and I knew it was really good. I even put in like the description of the of the auction, you will not be disappointed. We tried to show as much of the stuff as possible, but also not show all of it to, you know, have a little bit of mystery mystery to it. But it was a really good lot. And I was like so hopeful that somebody would, you know, get that it, it would catch on and, you know, kind of catch fire with the auction. But we just lost a bunch of money on it. She, she probably should have started the I auction higher. I should have either started she higher. Wanted, she thought it was going to like yeah. churn like the other ones. So or I should have just one of those done it as a as a buy it now. But, you know, mm. I, I'm not really like upset about it because I got rid of all the stuff. Again, and it we cleared don't have out to worry so much space because we had a lot of pouches and things filled with jewelry that hadn't moved. In and ages. I'm sure the person who got it was thrilled because it was like yeah, a bunch a, of really new and packaged deal. stuff and a bunch a really of some sterling stuff and... They got a good deal. But anyway, it was six pounds of almost all usable, some new, very little junk. But I did put that in the title because that's true. And it was a jewelry lot. The difference between this one and the first one is that I didn't say, un I left out the word unsearched because it was technically searched. You know, I just didn't want to lie. It's like you could take a thing of cards and the same cards, you open it, but boy, once you open that pack, yeah, it's worthless. But truly, I think it would have sold better if I had put unsearched. But, it would have, but that know, would have been a lie. It would have been a lie. And I can't, I, I didn't want to lie. But our all in cost on this from, you know, purchasing it at multiple locations was $26.25. And it only sold for $25.50. So we did lose money on that. But I, you know what, no regrets on that. I mean, regrets, Again. but you know, also like, it's not what gonna, are you going to do? It's, and it's I, I'm not us. like upset about it. I'm not, yeah. you know, sitting here like going to sleep at night thinking like, oh man, I really should have done that jewelry lot differently. <laughs> I'll probably think about Life it tonight. <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay, the next thing was our daughter's very old Acer 16 inch gray laptop computer. When I went to like power it on and try to Put it back to factory settings. I got some crazy screen that was like, what a, did it say? Boot. It wouldn't. It wouldn't boot. It yeah, boot it was like missing some kind of file. It wouldn't boot. So we had to just list it as powers on, but doesn't boot. So that devalued it a lot. But I don't even remember how much we paid for it. Not a lot, honestly. I think I got it. It's like and a, it's old on like it's, a Groupon. Like it was pretty old. Eight years ago or something. And that ended up selling for fourteen dollars. Still made profit on we it. Still made a little yeah, bit of money. Got profit. rid of it. But you know, it was kind of a junky computer. It, it was, was like a kid's computer. It was, it was junky when it, it was, was like new. It was like a Minecraft, honestly. you know, like what she played Minecraft. On. It was really low. Yeah. On specs. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Okay. Next up was a lot of two Princess Cruises Roly Poly shot glasses that we got on our last cruise. And we always, you know, sell our the stuff that we get from the cruise, and it always sells well. People like cruise souvenirs, and so we had no 
we actually did have cost on from these, but you know, we, I didn't put it on the spreadsheet because it was just a personal item. These sold for $18.99, and I can tell you we technically did not pay that much for them. So Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next up was another Mary Kay item. This was gifted to us to sell by a family member, and this was the Translucent Loose Powder, and it was new in the box. We got several of these, and they sold out. These sold really, really well. So while I want to say to you, if you ever see a bunch of Mary Kay items, especially this translucent powder, pick it up. I'm hesitant to say that because I have also heard that Mary Kay will, if you have a large quantity of Rain Mary Kay, great they, vengeance upon you. they will. They will contact you and say you are not verified to sell these items online and you need to take them down. Now, technically they can't do that if you are not a consultant. For Mary Kay, you have not signed any kind of agreement with them. You're protected under the first sale doctrine, and so you can sell the items. But just as an FYI, Mary Kay does come after people in that way. And so I did have about 15, so, 15 items of Mary Kay things. Oh, total, yeah. Maybe. Total. And I was like, well, is this enough for them to consider me worthy of coming after? And apparently not. Apparently not. They did not. We've sold out. Or they out. sold fast enough yeah. that it didn't matter because they sold within a few days. They did. They did. But just an FYI of that, I would not recommend that you you know run out and pick up huge bulk items of Mary Kay because honestly, that's really true for any of the MLM kind of companies. That's, you know, they all have those kinds of agreements with their consultants. So just be aware of that. Okay, so we had no cost on this makeup and it sold for $14.99 very quickly. Uh, next up was a 1990 Fleer Berry Bonds card. This was Kevin's and that sold for $3 even and that sold on Mercari. Next up was a Thomas Kincaid Home is Where the Heart Is uh, Teleflora gift teapot. So this probably had flowers in it. I had purchased a big bulk lot of stuff at a garage sale and this just happened to be in a box of other stuff that I purchased. I did not pick this up intentionally. It was just in with some other stuff that I wanted. I was and wondering so, where that came from. I was like, why would she pick up this? I didn't really pick it up intentionally. It was just in there. But since we already owned it, I listed it and eventually it sold. Yeah. I had paid 87 cents for it and it sold for $19.99. So we did make some profit on that. Next up was a Faded Glory Girls Medium Hot Pink Camisole Tank Top. It was new with the tags. We got that out of a storage unit for just 24 cents. It only sold for $9.99, but you know, another item that we already owned from a storage unit. So, and it was new with tags. So. Yeah, profit. Yeah, exactly. Profit. Okay, next up was three items that sold to the same buyer. And if you are a viewer, thank you so much. We do appreciate you. This was a Victoria's Secret small padded bralette and a Victoria's Secret navy racerback bra and a Victoria's Secret swimsuit cover-up. So this buyer is a fan of Victoria's Secret and I cannot blame her. Uh, these were actually all mine. These were all my items yeah. and they sold for $33.61. Probably someone exactly her size who just yeah. happens to like this. Well, actually stuff. all of this stuff is what got too small for me, so. <laughs> somebody who yeah, somebody. smaller than me. Exactly, you. exactly. Um, next up was another package of that Mary Kay powder, and we had no cost, sold for $14.99. Next up was two more boxes of the Mary Kay powder, those both things to the just same person. We're just like yep. flying off the shelf. We had no cost, those sold for $28.48. Next up was a 1987 Garbage Pail Kid Series 10 trading card. It was the card Raped Jake. And man, I loved Garbage Pail Kids. Oh my gosh. He, he I, I think I he was a little old for them, but oh, I was so into Garbage Pail Kids. But I actually got this on Mercari using uh, money that I earned through my affiliate link. And Which is down below. We have had a lot of sales on Mercari lately. You'll see we've had like this particular week, we have like four or five. When we get to the next week's video, which is going to be coming up next week, <laughs> we have even more sales on Mercari. So Mercari is really popping oh, that's off. That's weird. We sold that on Mercari and we got that on Mercari. Yeah. So you guys, if you are interested in selling on Mercari and you're not selling on Mercari yet, 
do consider using our affiliate link because you can get a free $30. You'll get $10 with your first purchase and $20 after you sell $100 worth of items. So, I mean, if you are a reseller, deal. it's pretty easy to sell $100 worth of items. And so that's $30 free for you. And it helps me out as well with affiliate money. So, and win, win, win. Exactly. And then you'll have an affiliate link that you can share also with people and you can earn money and as so well. On. So the gift and keeps so on, on giving. And you can use that $30 that you earn from clicking on my link to do things like I did and buy more things to resell. So, you know, just keep that train moving. All right, so this garbage pail kid we had gotten for free and it sold for $3.49. Next up was a black canvas padded camera case. We got several of these out of the Goodwill bins. Like four, something like that, four yeah. or five. A we long sold all time of ago. them. We kept one of them for personal we use. We used one, yeah. Yeah, and we sold the rest of them. This one we paid $1.50 for and it sold for $29.99. And that was the last of them. That was the last of them. Next up was two, the brand was called Outer Wraps and the buyer bought two of the exact same thing. They were one size adult neck gaiters and they had a really cute little penguin print all over them and they were new with tags. We got these doing retail arbitrage. We were all in for just 86 cents for those. They were on clearance and they sold to that buyer for $9.78. The buyer actually reached out to us and said, I'm looking for more of these, do you have more? And I was like, no, darn it, <laughs> we don't. Okay, next up was a 2005 Fisher-Price Little People Nativity Set Replacement Palm Tree. We got this out of a thrift store toy bag for just 19 cents. And this sold for $5 with free shipping. This is one of those where the free shipping got turned on you know, when it was supposed to be calculated shipping. I've mentioned this on many wet solds before that I thought that I was making a mistake with the shipping, but I did also say that I had, I really questioned that because I felt like it was odd that I was making so many mistakes and that we were having that issue. And then if you have not seen my video that goes over the recent eBay glitch, which seems to have been resolved, at least for us, it, it seems to have been resolved. But if you have not seen that video about that glitch that involves both shipping and pricing, do check that out because it was a doozy. It really was a doozy. It's one of our- And we found out it's happening to a lot of people. It's happening to a lot of people. The free shipping thing was happening to a lot of people. So definitely check that video out. So I feel like this was not a user error. This was an eBay error and it was just dropping the shipping. So just be aware of that. Be aware of the pricing thing, especially if you are using your PC to start a listing and then using your phone to add photos. That seems to be something like that, that specifically reason. affects the pricing. So anyway, we're pro if you've not seen that video, you don't know what we're talking about, but I would strongly, strongly recommend that you check out the video about the glitch because it has a lot of good information in it. Anyway, this item sold with free, free uh, shipping, which we did not intend it to, and it seems to be an eBay glitch. But we honored the sale anyway and we lost, only a, lost dollar a dollar and eight cents. It's no big deal. So, because it, you know, of course, eBay is not going to take the defect yeah, it, off, and yeah. I'm not going to risk getting there's, negative feedback no over a dollar and yeah. eight cents. Just sell it. Next up was a lot of Hoover Genuine Parts. It included a three pack of vacuum bags and a Style 160 belt. A really interesting lot, you know, something that. Exciting. Everybody wants to get, but somebody did. We got this at a garage sale for 25 cents and it sold for $8.99. Next up was another lot of items. And I think this sold to the same person. It, it was the same person. Yeah, the same person that bought the lot before. This was an H&M romantic crop top, mm. an exhilaration halter bikini swimsuit, a lot of two halter racerback bralettes, and a small smock dress. And all of these items either belong to me or Nina. And so we had no cost and they sold for $41.98. And I gave her a really great deal on stuff because she was buying so much. So, and we still managed to make some good profit. So it was a win-win for both yeah. of us. 
Okay, next up was a two pack of Nutramax Denimarin liver health supplement tablets for dogs. And these were actually ours. Sadly, our dog who had some liver struggles ended up passing away. And these were some supplements that we had purchased for him prior to his death. But they were very valuable, so we did decide to resell them. Yeah. But uh, they so sold very, very quickly for $76. So on a reselling note, if you do ever see brand new sealed, unexpired packages of these, they will sell for a lot. And they also were and having a shortage of them. They're not prescription. No, they're not prescription. And they also were having a shortage of them for a while. So people mm. were really having to go to eBay to find them. Okay, next up was another package of the Mary Kay translucent powder, which sold for $14.99. Next up was another package of the Mary Kay translucent powder, which sold for $14.99. And next up was another package of the it. Mary Kay translucent powder for $14.99. <laughs> they are translucent because they disappeared. Okay, next up was a $94.95 Select Top Shelf Jumbo 5x7 Lenticular 3D Motion Mike Madano Dallas Stars card. This was Kevin's. It sold for $5.98. Next up was a 2015 The Teacher's Pet Wee Woolies Craft Kit. We got that at the bins for $1.68 and it sold for $10 on Mercari. Next up was a pair of Levi's Boys Skinny Stretch Denim Blue Jeans. We got those at a garage sale for $0.72. Cents. How'd we get those at a garage sale for $0.72? Cents? It must have been one of those where we bought multiple things and then split the cost because yeah. the, the, the garage sale wouldn't have charged us $0.72. Cents. And those sold for $18.99. Next up was a Kinetel Cine Lens for a movie, 8 millimeter movie camera. And it came with a brown leather case. We got that at out of that. The same box the same as camera the photo box. thing from the beginning yep. of the video. Yeah. Paid 22 cents for that and it sold for $42. That was a good one. It was a good one. Next up was a Women's Sweater Works Red Cardigan. We got that out of a storage unit for just 28 cents and it sold for $9.93. Next up was a pair of Weiss Costume Cluster Crystal Rhinestone Clip-On Earrings. They were signed. We got those at a garage sale for a dollar and they sold for $18. Next up was a Polo Ralph Lauren Classic Fit Yellow Check Button Dress Shirt. We got that at a thrift store. And why does it say a zero dollars? when we shipped it, it said zero dollars. I think it's because this is from a thrift store trip long, long ago and we didn't write have proper keeping track the other, that, the other that reason that it can say that is because i do remember getting a couple of shirts from that thrift store and they were missing buttons and i set them off to the side to repair the buttons on them and could i might have, have already too. rolled the cost into the it, there's there's yeah. a number of things it could have been so somehow, but it says zero on the yeah it does somehow we magically got this at a thrift store for zero dollars and we, stole it. we did not and it sold for $22.99. Next up was a... Oh, your fingers are sticky. Shut up. Next up was a signed Chief Z. He was um, kind of like a local celebrity fan of the Washington Redskins. And he signed a t-shirt. It was a vintage t-shirt that we got at an estate sale. I think it was a single stitch t-shirt. We was. paid $3 for that and it sold for $24.99. That came from the Sugar Town. The Sugar Town sale. estate sale, yep. Next up was a Nobo women's high rise raw hem pair of jeans that we got out of a storage unit for 28 cents. They sold for $13.48. Cause you know, Nobo is a super sought after mm, brand. Quality. <laughs> Next up was an item that we got out of a Goodwill blue box that was billed as a women's vintage box. And this was not a vintage item. It was, not. It was an INC International Concepts women's three quarter sleeve knit top. Clearly not vintage, but we still paid $4.20 for that out of a Goodwill blue box. It sold for $12.14. Managed to make a little bit of profit Somehow. on it, but Goodwill, come on. I mean, 
That is not vintage. Yeah, that was not a vintage box. Next up, last up, was a 1995 Team Pinnacle Eric, Eric T. Rhett Buccaneers and Bam Morris card. And that sold for $3.98. And that wraps up everything. That's it? Yeah. So let's go over the totals. All right. You want to do it? Total number of sales, 58. Average sale price, $24.08. All right. Why are you pointing at me? I'm pointing because I figure it's oh, going to be, be right here. here. Yeah. 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 Here. Total sales, $1,396.89 for a net profit of $662.45. Not bad. It's a decent week. It's a decent week. Yeah. Because we've started listing stuff again, so. Yeah, we're finally. Now we're, now we're starting to see some I think the next week we had a couple of good sales, so it should be higher even. Yeah. Yeah, next week's going to be a good one, guys. So definitely doozy. tune in. All right. Well, that wraps up our sales for the week of March 3rd through 9th. Thanks for joining in with both me and Kevin. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you're not subscribed, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And we will catch you guys on the flip side. What? <laughs>